gas masks and hand grenades. 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 <laughs> Hey, 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 what is happening? YouTube, gas masks and hand grenades, where the music melts your mind. I'm your host, Jeff, and today I have a, a, a guest that, quite frankly, until about three weeks ago, I was not aware of this band. I was not aware of this, this gentleman that's going to join me today. Uh, I was put on to this band through Will over at Season of Mist, not Seasons of Mist, it's Season of Mist. I always I always screw that up, so I want to make that clear. Uh, he sent me a promo of this band's new album. It is their fifth album. They have three EPs out as well. And uh, it's a French blackened death band called Necro Wretch. And it's ironic because I just had Necro Fire on about two weeks ago. So I'm in this vein of necros. I've got a lot of necros to go, I guess. But uh, let's bring this gentleman in. He is the original founding member, guitarist, vocalist. I'm assuming he's probably the prominent songwriter, but we'll find out about that. Let's bring in Vlad from Necro Wretch. How are you, man? Hi. Good evening. How are you doing? And thanks for the invitation. Absolutely, man. Good to see you. We had a a nice little chat before we got started here and uh, again want to point out the the guys will and frank over at uh season of mist they're kind of my contacts and they've been sending me some cool stuff and i have to say of all the stuff that they've sent me uh in recent weeks since we started sort of doing some work together this is the album that jumped out at me and and i kind of set the table a little bit when we started that i'm very picky about my black metal however you kind of go with the 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 genre classification that you're more of a death metal band with maybe blackened uh uh vibes or blackened tinges to it but let's let's kind of i know all artists are kind of like don't stick me in that box don't stick me in that folder but if you really had to like let's talk about your influences maybe starting out as a guitar player as a musician where did you start at to end up where you're at now? And I do, I did listen to the, the last three albums prior to this one. And there is a, a definitive, I feel, definitive change in the sound to a large extent, particularly with this new one. Where, What were your influences and how do you classify yourself, if at all? Well, the, the influences are very large because it can go from Judas Priest to uh, Marduk. So it's like a very... Uh, different panels um, for the extreme metals i will say mostly the first death metal uh, band from usa like death possessed morbid angel in their prime uh the side the old cannibal cops and as well some old bands from sweden from the 90s uh, merciless uh, grotesque uh, that became at the gates later uh, mephisto and some bands from South America for the very violent and raw uh, music they deliver, like uh, the very first uh, albums from Sepultura, Sepultura. as well as uh, some bands from Peru, like uh, Enel Vomit or Mortem. So it's kind of mix. Um, and to say if we are a black or a death metal band, it's a good question. I don't know even if I can answer, but uh, I will say that uh, for the songwriting, uh, we are still um, more into death metal because when you listen to typical black metal bands, uh, you can hear the same riff like maybe 20 or 30 times in, in a loop. And we never do this. We keep it four times, maybe eight times at maximum, but we keep it short. And the um, average length of the song are like four to five minutes. Uh, we go pretty much straight to the point. And this is more something you can find in death metal uh, songwriting compared to, to black metal. Also, I do not believe we are too much melodic. It's still very um, vicious and ferocious. So therefore, I will say it's still um, 
somewhere between black and death, but with a, a death metal uh, songwriting and basis to the the songs. See now, I you're the guy writing the songs, so I'm not arguing with you. I, I I wanted to get your take on it first, but I hear an awful lot of dissection. I hear dissection in because it is. I do hear m melody. I'm a guitar player. And I definitely hear melodic uh, sounds. You're not a strict tremolo picker. There is tremolo picking going on, but there's not, as you say, the the, the overwhelming sort of uh, tremolo stuff going on. But you're right. You do vary up the riffs quite a bit. And I'm glad you brought up Judas Priest because I hear some new wave of British heavy metal in, in your music as well, particularly the newest album in particular. There's a lot more shall we say earworms they they stick a little bit better for me with this new album than they did with with uh stuff like for example satanic slavery very very good as well i think going back as far as putrid death sorcery it's a little bit more a little more one-dimensional sort of kind of as opposed to where you're out are now and, and there's there's songs on the new album for example i'm sorry i missed uh the ones from hell not satanic slavery that was the the other one that I feel is kind of the the companion piece to what you're doing now, but uh, yep. the new the new album here. Let's um, let's do this. I do not have it as yet. I'm I'm definitely getting a copy on vinyl, but I want to show people the artwork. So give me one second here, and we'll, we'll do a little share screen thing here. Sure. Hopefully, I can pull it up properly. There we go. There, that's from your Bandcamp page. Which, by the way, all of your contacts, your social media links, the website, your Facebook, all that stuff are in the 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 uh, below in the description below. But this is the new mm -hmm. album here, Stor Swords of D Dajel. 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 Yeah. Dajel. Okay. What's the uh, significance of that title? Is there any specific uh, reason for oh, that? We, we we can translate to sort of the antichrist actually it can, it can be like this but uh, the jal is the the main incarnation of the antichrist in um, islamic uh, eschatology ah, uh, therefore okay. we we focused on this character there was um, something very interesting to build around this uh, false prophet and therefore um, the first song we wrote actually was uh, swords of dajal and then when we had it we say okay this is uh, such a good theme that we can build all the album around it uh, therefore, uh, it was the, the center of the attention, and we thought uh, there is a, a lot of good content, some things we know, and also many things we do not know, or that are subject to interpretation. So it was a, the perfect uh, opportunity to make a, a good album around it. Okay, very, very good. Uh, I have a couple of uh, my buddies in the chat here, one of which I want to, uh, Tim, I want to thank you. You your slogan is the one that's going i'm going with for the show the one i began the show with so wanted to point him out um roger he's uh an old school black metal uh, extreme metal fan from from norway uh he uh he's very well aware of your your material um swords is a killer song yep so thanks guy yeah uh who did the artwork the art the artwork was uh, crafted by uh stefan tanner a French artist who also worked for our previous art, and he also created some uh, illustration for um, other bands. Um, I think some bands from US as well or Europe. He's not so much known in the business, but uh, all his creations are very original, and it was okay. important for us because I do want when people go to a vinyl shop. If there is, a, let's say, 20 vinyls in a box, they need to stop on our record and to say, okay, what is going on here? Um, I cannot understand the music with this artwork. And it's very important to keep it mysterious, to have some question, open question, and say, okay, it's interesting. Let's uh, discover what is behind this artwork. Because unfortunately, in extreme metal, sometimes when you see the artwork, you exactly know what kind of music you will see. Yes. Like for example, the, the name of your show. You see, you, there is a lot of uh, extreme metal bands with some goats uh, handing grenades and machine gun on the artwork. You know, with its red logo, and you know it will be some kind of beherit uh, or blasphemy uh, worship, 
or also in the black metal there is this artwork with all these mountains and this viking stuff uh, right. you know what you will find and for us it's very important to keep our own identity um therefore we wanted something that is more looking like a science fiction uh poster like something maybe connected to dune or some old school sci-fi or horror movies uh we wanted it this way so uh, i guess for me it's a pretty cool artwork yeah it's very very cool it's very uh iconic and the interesting thing is you just brought up my show name the the funny thing about that is that that name is not really indicative of my entire uh show i don't know if you looked over my my cast of people that i've interviewed but i i span the gamut from guys like king's x doug pittick yesterday i had stephen wilson from porcupine tree on and no man i have uh uh, I have Marissa Nadler, who is a doom folk artist. I kind of span the the gamut. So it is funny. You, you bring that up that <laughs> my my and I've been searching for a slogan, which Tim in the uh, in the chat here kind of gave me gave me this the other night. Um, I, you know, initially I was like, well, I got to make it kind of sound evil. And I got to make it sound, you know, like it's metal. And then the more I thought about it, it's like, well, my channel isn't all metal. It's kind of very vast. I love stuff like Lust Mord and. The Abba, I love Abba. You know, that's one of my favorite oh, cool. bands. So I'm kind of <laughs> all over the map. But you're right. My my name implies something a little different. Which, let's be honest, Necro Wretch is has an implication behind it too. Just just you know. Sure. So and and it's interesting here because Tim picked up on what I picked up on that. I feel the the more you've gone on from your early recordings, you are leaning more into a black metal sort of sound. And but it's not it's not a black metal where you say where it's just a constant grinding same old e minor you know uh, an e minor tremolo that goes down to d minor and then goes back you know you do move it around and that's where the judas priest the new wave of british heavy metal stuff comes in because the songs they breathe they move they don't stay static right um and now are you the primary songwriter i'm assuming you might be Yes, I am the primary songwriter, and actually for all the records before, I was writing everything, including the the drum patterns and uh, everything at all. But for this new album, we have a new lineup, and also I think this is a big reason that uh, why this album is uh, why better. It's because uh, we wrote the album together with the, the drummer and with the second guitarist. Therefore, I... Um, show a lot of the id the primary id but they helped me to um, improve it to find some new twists to rewrite a lot of things actually we did a lot of demo we did two years of demo before entering the studio so there is like the song you are listening right now it's maybe the version 20 or 25 of the same song but we improve okay. improve spend a lot of time on rehearsal as well to improve it and there is many things that we did did not keep because it was not strong enough. And so there was a lot of uh, team building on, on this okay. album. Therefore, I think it's it's something like a um, more complex and more of, how can I say, way, way better version of Necroverse. You mentioned before our first album, A Pute with Death Sorcery, but I, I was like in maybe in my 20s or 21 when I wrote this album. So of course, it's when I listen right now, I, I, I like it, of course, but it's way more basic. Uh, my um, songwriting and my capacity, uh, my skills at guitar um, improved a lot since right. this time. So, of course, uh, therefore, the new album uh, shows uh, some pattern that we were not able to think or to play uh, 15 sure. or 10 years ago. Sure. How, how long have you been playing uh, playing guitar? Since 2000. So like something like 15 years right now okay so you started very like around the early around the time that you did the first album you had been a pretty much a, a, a beginner player at that point yeah sure sure actually yeah, okay. when we started the first demo we didn't know even how to tune the guitar or how to play <laughs> properly <Right>. so <laughs> but we learn we learn on the on the field with the the shows with other bands to teach us and sure and then we went here yeah. um so being from france you don't typically think of black metal much in terms of you always think of the scandinavian countries when you think of black metal or maybe the uk as well right 
but there are some some of my favorite bands uh actually are the french bands in particular i'm a huge blue house nord fan okay massive massive and i don't know where vince Vall is at is he in, he might be in paris as well i'm not sure or maybe he's more north i'm not really sure no clues <laughs> yeah yeah um and then you've got alcest would be one of the other you know more uh you know they're a little bit more in the shoegazy black metal spell and then you've got stuff like and i'm just doing the ones that i know bands like death spell omega uh that very angular dissonant you're not like them and you're, I hear little bits of Blue Dust Nord, a little bit, but not not a lot. Um, I hear like early creator, stuff like that. Uh, maybe, maybe a, I don't really hear like Battery, like first wave stuff. Hear a little Day Mysterious, but you, you kind of mix it all in to a nice stew for this new album that is, you know, very, very listenable. And uh, I think that, that it, it's, how are you seeing the, you know, the album's only been out about three and a half weeks right now. What kind of responses are you getting it right now? So far, the response is very good, actually, um, especially in the USA, because we didn't have so much support from the US in the previous album. Some people are the ring around, but uh, this time I saw a lot of um, reviews, a lot of um, interview requests and feedback. Uh, from this part of the world and of course from France as it's our main fan base and we sure. played a, a lot of shows in France and Europe but so far everyone um, would say it's, it's the good album many people say it's our best album so far so it's up to people to decide many people love the artwork some people do not like because it's not typical metal so it's up to everyone as I say it's everyone can make his own interpretation more important is the band is satisfied with the product uh, we are not a professional band, you know, we do this on our free time, so we do not make music to make money and to please the fans. First right. of all, we make mu we make the music we have in our guts, and we want to be satisfied with it and go on stage and, and destroy everything. So I, I think this is also an important point, and it makes, like, we can take four years to make an album. It's long, right. but we can afford to make it. We do not have some financial uh, things like pushing us to make the record fast. We have the time to make it, and we have the time to make it right. Um, therefore, the for back the the feedback is pretty good, and I saw already um, many um, versions of the vinyls are sold out or close to sold out. Great. So it's also a good indicator. Just the two weeks after the the release of the album. Yeah, we should mention. I don't. I forgot to mention that the uh, the new album. Soars of Dajel came out on Season of Mist on February 2nd, uh, 2024. Uh, you, uh, the Bandcamp link is down below, so have at it, guys. Tim, you asked earlier, is a download version available? According to the Bandcamp, there is, yes. So go yeah. ahead and grab that there. And also, Tim points out something that I had completely forgotten, and I thank you. And it is a complete coincidence, actually. Uh, the show Heavy Metal Metallurgy which unfortunately, Vlad is going to be on in the middle of the night for you, but you might want to catch it the next day if you have work tomorrow or whatever. But it, it's yeah, it would be on at like 3 a.m. for you. 9 p.m. Yeah. tonight on Heavy Metallurgy. My guys, my friends over there, Marty and crew, are actually going to be doing a four-way review of Swords of Dajel tonight, 9 p.m. So check that Amazing. out. It was a complete coincidence because I'd been working on this interview uh, situation with with Season of Mist for about the last two weeks, and we were just trying. We were going to do it last week, actually, and I had yeah. some medical issues that I had to attend to that that interfered. So, so yeah, total uh, total coincidence. But that'll be something for you to then check out tomorrow, Vlad. I'll make sure you get a link to that. I'll send it to Will, or you can, if you want, you can drop in the private chat. You can drop your email address, and I can get you a link for that then. So, cool. um. You, you mentioned touring, uh, and you did mention to me uh, before you came on, we talked about that you have not been to the States as yet. Where um, where have you toured? Just mainland Europe and mainly France at this point? or I say in uh, since the beginning of the band in 2008, we did around uh, one, 120, 130 shows in total. Wow. Uh, maybe half of the show were in France, of course. Uh, we did a couple of tours, I don't remember, like one or two tours for each album in Europe. 
mostly underground tours with Necroach as headliner or with other underground bands. We played in many countries in Europe, also Scandinavia, United Kingdom, uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, we did some tour in Eastern Europe um, as well. Um, then some festival, the big names would be like Hellfest uh, oh, and nice. Partisan in Germany, Some also some other important festival in France. And then we did two a time um, mini tour in Turkey, which was like a very, very good um, audience and a turning point for the band and for me personally. And we did two tours in Southeast Asia, like Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, oh, wow. Korea, and so on. And we are planning to to go again for this album, hopefully. And for the yeah. USA and Americas in general, North and South America, no, we didn't come so far because we had many options. Sometimes it was even announced that we will come some show or book, but every time when the promoter is about to buy the flight tickets, then there is no one answering, and we never find, a, let's say, a serious partner or someone who can afford you know, to pay thousands of dollars of flight tickets, and I can understand it's difficult especially for bands like us who, I mean, we will have some audience come, but we, we, we are not uh, uh, have five or 600 people every night right. if we play in Brazil or if we play in, in Texas, you know? So sure. therefore, we didn't find so, the best offer so far. We are still working on something for this album. Hopefully, we can arrive to a good, uh, a good deal, but it's a kind of hard for the bands. And I heard, two kind of story or the bands come and they pay everything for themselves and i'm sorry but i do not work in a bank and we cannot afford this yeah or bands are uh have a, some serious offers and they come to do the tour support of a bigger band you know uh, and then at this time they can be sure to tour in good condition so maybe we can find something in between hopefully have you of course if someone is interested they can contact us by email or reach season of mystery sure sure um you know what might be a really cool opportunity maybe next year would be and that is next year but like you know festivals like maryland death fest or hell's heroes or one of these bigger we don't do a lot of them here like that are strictly metal like maybe uh uh the milwaukee metal fest something like that that is strictly mostly metal as opposed to like bonnaroo or Coachella, they don't really cater to that kind of, to this kind of mm -hmm. music. But, you know, Maryland Death Fest, uh, I have friends from Esoteric. Have you heard of Esoteric? You know them, right? I would think. Uh, you know, one of the pinnacle uh, funeral doom bands from UK, they couldn't really afford to come over on their own to do a major tour, but they, they did get an offer this year to play uh, Maryland Death Fest, and they've set up a nice little East Coast and Midwest tour that they're able to go out and they're actually going out with i don't know if you know blood are you familiar with blood incantation of course <laughs> yeah so paul's other, one of his other bands one of his other bands is uh um spectral voice kind of mm -hmm. a funerally doomy sort of band and they're going out yeah. esoteric with them and doing a few dates that would be ideal for something for for you guys to get that kind of a thing happening where you could get over the festival would probably pay for the flights and then you could arrange something to do some smaller shows because you're right. Let's be honest. You're, it's unlikely you're going to bring in hundreds of people on your first time here. It's just the way it is. Mm. And and the reality of the states is, you got to travel. I mean, you you know, it's yeah. you're talking you're talking five hours from Baltimore to New York City, and you're talking a, a, an extensive amount of fuel cost and toll cost and things like that. Philadelphia's in there. But you could play like Boston, Philadelphia, New York, maybe even D.C., and maybe go a little further west like Pittsburgh or Cleveland and get five or six, get your foot in the door for the first time over here. So hopefully somebody can help you do that. Um, I'm not a promoter, although I'm thinking about going down that route. So we'll never – you never know. I might be giving you a call in a sure. year's time saying, hey, let's do this. But <laughs> what um, – what? so what's the biggest crowd you paid to, Hellfest or Partisan? Or yeah, what? Hellfest. No, how, how, was definitely. how was that for you as opposed to playing a club where you may have 150 to 250 300 people how is that getting up in front and now granted you you 
I'm sure you weren't playing to a crowd like Maiden was playing at Hellfest. That's a different story. But you're probably playing to a couple thousand people. And what's that like in terms of the headspace? The you know, is it ang- anxietizing for you, or are you pretty good getting up anywhere and just going? I would say first, as a French band, it's the it's an honor, you know, to play in Hellfest because um, it's the main festival here and it's really changed the face of metal in general in our country i was right. here for the first edition as a as visitor and i remember uh, how was metal in france before the half and how it became after so first for us it's also a big honor to be part of the festival and even if you play in the morning you arrive and there is already thousands of people five yeah. six maybe ten thousand people can watch your show it's a really crazy thing and uh, some, you know, there is six stage in Hellfest. Yeah. There is the main stage, two main stage that are more dedicated for, let's say, mainstream music. And right. there is two other stage, like uh, altar and temple stage, which are dedicated to black and death metal. So mostly also you play in front of your audience or people right. who are into this kind of music. Some curious, of course, but mostly people come vi- for this music and they will stay on this stage uh, from morning till uh, midnight. You know, right, to right. watch all the bands. So it's like people are not here by mistake. Yeah. And um, it, it was the best. We played two times in Hellfest, actually, 2015 and 2022. Uh, it was a very good show, but let's be honest, on, on big stage like this, we are not used to, to play uh, uh, such big festival. And it's uh, always tricky to, um, to have a line check of five minutes and to get a yeah. proper sound. Yeah. So it's like you start your show and some things are like you, you cannot hear maybe your guitar in the in the in the wage or your feedback is not the best one. So after a couple of songs, it starts to be better. But it's like this mostly for all bands. Uh, there is only the bands who always plays in such big festival who arrive and have a perfect sound and perfect uh, opening at their show. For sure. us, it's a little bit more tricky, but we work on this. And already the second time when we play in LFS, it was way better. But it's still very impressive to come on a stage with a, such a huge sound. Every time the drum is doing one uh, kick, you have all your guts moving you know, on the stage. So just think when you start to play some extreme metal, it's going super loud. And there is like thousands of people in front of you. So it's a really good, really good experience. Uh, hopefully we can do it again or we can do some festival like this uh, somewhere in, in Europe or the rest of the world. Have you, uh, have you, I assume you've been to Hellfest as a, as a fan before, right? Many times. Yeah. Yeah. That is, I mean, it's crazy to see how that's grown. It's, it's its own, it's its own little city when that thing kicks in for a week long, right? Is it mm-hmm. a week long or like four or five days? Well, it depends on the edition. Sometimes it was like a big weekend, and sometimes they did like two weekends in a row. But let's say you, p- people start to arrive many days before, so for the city, it's like one week uh, full of metal ads, yeah. Right, right. Um, yeah, so I, I guess what is your biggest takeaway as far as you mentioned that the new band, uh, are, are the Cadaver Brothers actual brothers, or is that just for fun? <laughs> brothers. <laughs> Bro- brothers in music, yes, we can say. Okay, brothers in music. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I had you, to laugh. You, you like, can show, they, they were playing in the same band before, in uh, Cadaveric Films, a very okay. good oh. death doom band from France. And so when the band split up, uh, let's say the half of the lineup came in Necrorage, and therefore they also uh, bring their view on the music. Ah, yeah, the, the split with Skeleton. Very good. Good yeah, choice, I, have, uh, <laughs> I have the album. That is one of my favorite, favorite albums. Love Cadaver. Cadaver. Uh, sure. Cadet, how do you say Cadaveric? Cadaveric Fumes? Cadaveric Fumes, yes. Cadaveric Fumes. There we go. Yeah. Love that album. It's buried right now, but I love it, man. Um, And so you have two guys that were in that band? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Very cool. That That's a little piece. We, you we know, share a lot of stage together. I was here at their first show. And they uh, play to support Necrorage for many shows in France. So, of course, when I was looking for a new lineup, I contacted them. And later, they split the band. So I right. said, OK, uh, you can come, both of you, you can come in, in Necrorage. And it will be awesome. Uh, too, too bad they didn't continue because the, the album was really amazing. But I guess oh, we were what? already moving to someplace different. And right now, we are making music together. So I guess it's a, 
it's a win-win situation. I was going to say it's a win for you for sure, no doubt. Um, mm-hmm. So how about that? There's there's some uh, there's a, a nugget of information for everybody that I wasn't aware of. That those two guys we will we'll call them W Cadaver and R Cadaver. Those are the two yes. gentlemen, bass bass and uh, lead guitar. And I, I will say, man, the the guitars on here are really good, man. I mean, it's it. I think it's what sets this album not that the other albums weren't good because they are you know you're an accomplished player but there's something a little different about this particular album that i hear like kind of like you jumped up a level in terms of songwriting in terms of performance in terms of kind of narrowing the focus for me uh my favorite songs are are and i'm gonna mess these titles up so zar al kufar is that it is that right and uh al kufar well, you'll have to fix fix for me. So I'm I'm an, I'm American. <laughs> I can't read these words. Uh, die, die Mori, 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 die Mori. D D Mori. D Mori. Okay, which is death, right? The death, or no? No, it's la, it's Latin actually. It's mean the the Moorish gods. Oh, okay. There you go. No. Uh, and then really dig total obliteration. That song is badass. And and the uh, instrumental before it, di, Daiva, di, Daiva is really really mm-hmm. cool too and that's where i hear a lot of you said you're not melodic i would argue that you are very melodic actually so that i hear the melody in there that there's cool guitar melodies going on and uh i think your voice is taking on a slightly different uh, uh context for these or, or textural vibe to it did you do anything different with your vocals on this because the one thing i really like about one thing i don't like a lot about a lot of really like super cavernous death metal or super extreme uh black metal is it's not that i'm reading the lyrics along but i like to hear the i I like to hear the enunciation of words and a lot of bands these cavernous type death metal bands and some of these but you can't understand a word they're saying they're just you know and you're just like all right well it just doesn't bring anything your vocals really are like the fifth instrument in this thing and they're really good because you have the raspy sort of black metal thing, but you have a more guttural sort of vibe on the, the so it's very much a a mixture of the two sort of typical type of type of voices. Did you do anything different on this one? Yeah, actually, it can be related to two or three different things. Uh, the first thing uh, I took some vocal lessons during the pandemic time, which I never okay. did before. You know, I know the many people say that in Necrovretch the Vocals were all always like the signature of the band in Santer. Yes, I, I know, but this time I, I took some lessons with a um, vocal teacher and I realized that I, did, I had a good uh, vocal pattern, but I didn't know anything about what I was doing with my body. So when I started to learn how to control it, it was way better. The second thing, uh, we spent a lot of time on studio, one and a half months to produce this album. So... For the previous album, some we did in six days, including the mastering. Some we did in one or two weeks. This time it was like uh, five complete weeks. And wow. we were doing a lot of time for the vocals, maybe one or two songs a day maximum, and then some days to rest the vocals, then come back and do it again. And uh, in, a, in a vocal session, I took maybe one, one or one and a half hour just to do the warm up. Till it's okay. completely ready, and I can sing the French national anthem. Then at this time, I say, "Okay, I'm ready to do it," and uh, <laughs> I can go for two or three hours to to sing the song. So many many vocal patterns you hear on the album are like one take, uh, wow. one take in a row with like four or like one verse complete or one chorus complete with no fake. You know, but uh, all the, the vocals are at once. I do not stop to make one sentence. And okay. make another one because so this will sound shitty. You're not punching yeah. in vocals or moving stuff around. In no, no. Uh, unless it's very, very fast, we uh, we always try to do it in one take because you you. It's like the drums, you know. You do it in one take, it's way better. You keep the energy. Uh, you start to cut and edit. No, it doesn't sound it and it will not match. So thanks to the warm up and the vocal lesson, I was able this time to do it properly. And I will say the last thing is maybe, um, but for us uh, French bands, uh, English is not our native language. 
but we do have a, a level that is enough, you know, for for job or for metal or movies in general. But it's not a native language, so we also want to spend a lot of time to be sure that uh, our words are enough catchy and the articulation is enough good, and then you can understand what we are saying uh, when we do the the vocals. Uh, therefore, it's important for me when I listen to the band or music in general, I can already catch some lyrics without uh, checking the lyrics itself. And this is important because uh, some of our audience um, are native English speaker and some of our audience are, are not native English speaker. So they right. need to understand what they are listening. It's It will make the music way more catchy. I will give an example. I really love the first D side album where we were able to understand the lyrics. It was amazing. And then at a certain point, I didn't know, Glenn Benton decided to just do Right, right, right. And it's bad. T too bad, because he had the capacity to do this. But, well, sorry, Glenn, but I, I prefer the, the first album. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. Still yeah. Very, a very good band in live, I need to say. But uh, there is this point. He stopped to work on his, on his pronunciation, and it, uh, it, it's bad. Do you, um, speak a minute here. The last album was that produced by the same guy, Francis Cast, or no? Or engineered, rather, I should no. say. No, no, it, it was the first time we went in the studio in Paris to work with uh, Francis Cast, who is a French producer for the last 20 years. And uh, we really wanted to work this time with a producer, means when you quit the studio, you have your mastering with you. It's not this kind of studio where you you do the drums and maybe two months later you will have first version of the mix. No, this time you enter the studio and we work everything with a clear goal. Where will we be in two weeks? When we will be in five weeks? Right. And then you spend one week. The last week is like just about mixing and mastering. And you do this in the studio with the producer and the producer will bring his own arrangement his own ideas sometimes even to improve the songs. There is some vocal patterns that were not uh, intended in the beginning, and he found the idea to improve the song compared to her version, and I think this is really important to work with this kind of, of producer. It's make a so real he, difference. He kept you on, on track? Album. He kept you on task? Yeah. In other words, yeah. Yeah, I think that is, that's usually the best part about having a producer as opposed to being self-produced where you can go, hey, I'm not feeling it today. Let's just go out and have some beers or go get some tacos or something. Then we'll come back and we'll sure. try it again. When you have a guy that's kind of being the the taskmaster saying, no, guys, we're going to sit down. We're going to get this done today. It, it exactly. helps keep a workflow going, right? You know? Yeah, and, and sometimes you can also say uh, you are going too far in a direction and you are moving from the goal you gave me two weeks before. Are you sure ah. we are going to do this? And then you realize, you say, oh, it's true. Uh, we should um, come back on the track. Yeah. Because you know how it is for extreme metal, everyone who wants to have his own instrument at the maximum. Yeah, and all course. the albums yeah. Yeah. Are, are mixed with everything in the red. But sometimes you need to do some concession and say, we, we need to leave some space to let the music breath, you know? Yes. And that's a great point. I, in, comparison, in comparing this to the prior album, I, I hear a little bit more space. And the cool thing I hear is you've added, not that you haven't had it on some of the earlier albums, but the, the I think the atmospheric sort of acoustic, some of the acoustic arrangements, some of the clean guitar is very mm. pivotal in making the, the, it's like once you come in with a clean guitar, maybe where you've got a, you know, a chordal thing that you're playing over top of it in just a distorted heavy riff, but underneath, you've got that clean sort of ringing, chiming guitar. It, it makes it catches the ear and makes you go, "Oh, I, I really want to pay attention to this." And I hear more of that on this album than I did on the prior two albums. So I think that maybe, maybe just and again, I'm an, I'm fairly new to the band, so you can call bullshit on that and say, "Oh, this guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about," and you'd be kind of right. Uh, but I am a player and I do write my own music, so I know how what I kind of like to hear myself where. There's more layers to this album, I feel. Uh, just in the guitars in particular, there's some cool layers going on that kind of level up the sound a little bit. If I'm not, do you hear that as well? Is that something you tried to do? Is that a, 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 
something you wanted to hear? Yeah, actually, the the whole album was written on acoustic 12 string guitar. Wow. And everything was written like this with, uh, you know, some notebook and um, pencil for the first ID. And you, you, we can actually play the whole album on acoustic guitar. I don't think so we will do one day, but it's possible. And it was meant to be like this, because if a riff is good in acoustic guitar, even in tremolo, it will be huge with distortion. And you can right. be sure you can remember and you can whistle this riff, like Iron Maiden or Judas Priest riff. You can whistle every of their riff. And if you start to, re to write some music with already big distortion, you you will kind of hide, you know, be, be behind this wall. It's like you start to do vocals with delay and reverb. Uh, first, start to do it with your own voice. And if it sounds good, then you can think about the effects. Build. And build. Also, well, that's it, build. So therefore, I think the music, he, because it was crafted like this, uh, you, you can feel it in the, in the final um, result. And also, we did add some... Um, of this 12 string guitar on the album, sometimes for some melodic section, or sometimes just to um, improve a start of a riff, you know, that you put a little bit of the 12 string guitar in the back with a minor chord, and it's uh, giving a, a lot of improvement. And uh, we are a huge fans of uh, video games like Diablo, you know, so right, of course right, we are right. also a lot a lot of into this kind of music. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Minors, acoustic guitar. So therefore we also wanted to to find a shape that that can connect uh, uh, this um, this thing and uh, and also um, as this album is uh, way into oriental music for the title of the album for the uh, the lyrics and all the themes of the song. The 12 string guitar with a little bit of uh, flanger on it adds a uh, natural oriental vibes to the music. Yeah, it's um, the thing about 12 string that's always really cool. I mean, you think about 12 string, you generally always think about folk music, right? All, all kind of folk music always uses the 12 string. But the cool thing about using it underneath, maybe your as a bed track for your to build on top of with your distorted guitars or your, even your clean guitars is it gives you this really cool washy atmosphere behind it. It gives a, a washy sort of vibe to it that like almost like, like the move, the, the move, the music is moving with it because of yep. the chiming and the ringing. It's so cool. Cause you know, you have those octaves in the strings and mm -hmm. um, yeah, very cool. I, and I picked up on that. I don't know the song titles well enough, but I think if I'm not wrong, the one where it kind of sticks out, I believe is, is this source of Dajel where you play the there's the the breakdown section where there's the 12 string just alone? Oh, or, or uh, Numidian it, Knowledge. New, I knew it was in the middle there. I wasn't sure if it was that one or yeah, Numidian Knowledge. That's the one where you, you actually have a breakdown section where it's just 12 string. It's very, very cool. Very cool. So, yep. Um, someone, uh, someone made a point here. I wanted to, where did it go here? Oh man, I, I think I lost it. Um, lots of guys in that. We've had 16, 15 people today. That's great in the middle of an afternoon. I know most of these guys are U.S. guys because I know these guys. So kind of cool. That shows that uh, our little community is is uh, you know repping your your album really well. So I want to thank all those guys who are here. A couple more questions, and I'll I'll get you out of here, Vlad. Um, what are the immediate sort of plans? For the band at this point and um you signed a season of miss and as i say i want to again thank will for uh recommending this album and, and this band and the interview uh what what's your relationship with them really i mean you've done three albums for them right yep and i didn't know this but i didn't know this but actually season of mist is a french label i always thought they were a u.s label that had a french office it's the other way around so I'm kind of, you know, I just didn't know that, but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, also working with us with a French label and uh, the biggest one, you know, Season of Mist is something uh, that we really enjoy because as a as teenager in metal, we uh, remember ordering some albums or discovering some bands or some albums released by Season of Mist. It was a big... Um, impact in the market when they signed uh, Mayhem at the time, 
-hmm. later um, Cynic, uh, Morbid Angel, unfortunately not for the best album, but Mime Invaded, it's a French label who did. And uh, so for us to work with them, it's, uh, it's very good because the, the communication is very simple. And as you point, we have some office in the Netherlands and in the USA. So it's meant we are not just working with French people, we are working with people in international. And um, therefore, we can have a lot of, of support and a lot of promotion to, to, to the music. So all in all, uh, again, I will say, as you say in the US, it's, it's a win-win situation. The immediate plans for now, of course, play. We have uh, many shows coming, most in France, later in Europe. We will see uh, which opportunity we have, hopefully, for the USA. And uh, we are working also on new video because we already produced two videos for this album. We will drop another one at the end of the month. And we are working for some other video for the end of the year because it's also important for us to show the universe around our lyrics, around our music in the video clips. But uh, as everyone knows, it's taking a lot of time and energy to prepare a video. So therefore, we cannot drop one video every week <laughs> like the yeah, well, big right, bands yeah, are yeah. doing. But we are working on it. And we are also, we are kind of new to do some music video and we start really to, to enjoy it. And so far, we have some good feedback for the last video. So that's on the plan and continue to play, maybe start songwriting for the future uh, album. And that's it. Already well, pretty busy with it. Yeah, sounds like it. Um, I'll uh, I'll drop a link. I'll copy a link in. I keep forgetting to do videos when a band has a video. I'll uh, I'll copy and paste a link into the description for people to check out. Then um, you know, make it easy on people. Uh, the, the easier, quicker you can get at something, the more you know how we live in that kind of society now, where it's like. Ah, and again, I don't know if you t took a look at my channel. I tend to do very long, lengthy, deep, deep interviews now. We're going to wrap up here at about an hour, but um, some of my stuff goes. Luke LeMay, who I'm friends with from Gorguts, five and a half hours. It just, I, I wound him up and said, You go, tell the story. And it was, <laughs> it was incredible. Guys like Kelly Shaper, who's a good friend of mine, three hours. So we're not going to, I'm not going to put you through that kind of a uh, thing tonight, but uh, that's typically what my channel is all about. And it's a struggle to get. You know, people don't want to spend three hours unless they're really real fans. Like the real fan will watch that and go, oh, my God, this is the coolest thing ever. But most <laughs> people just want to do the TikTok thing. Give me 30 seconds, 40 seconds and yeah. move on. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, which is sad. That's sad. But but the point I wanted to draw about that was the great thing about your new album is it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's I think it's 37 minutes or 39 minutes, somewhere in that range. It it gets in, it gets out, it 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 kicks you in the as I say, it kicks you in the balls and lets you know it's there, and then it goes away. And then you go, Oh, you know what? That was really good, and it went fairly quickly. I want to go back and check it out. Whereas, you know, I come from the era era in the in the 90s and 2000s where bands were doing 80-minute albums, and you just don't realize how tired you are by 50 minutes you're like okay I'm, I'm wiped out i gotta i gotta do something else this album's great because it gets in gets out it makes it packs a punch it leaves some earworms really does uh which is why i gravitated to it and so that's another cool thing about it i don't want to compare it to being a tiktok video but it, it kind of is in that respect whereas it's not a 60 minute yeah. album where you're just like you, by the time you get to the end of it, you're like, okay, I've heard enough. I don't want to go back for a while, you know. Sure. I don't know if you want to speak to that at all. Well, I will say if you drop an album, it means it's a bad album, actually, because we, we know some good albums that are very long, and you can listen over and over. So Many albums from Iron Maiden are so long, but he, when you when it's over, you're ready to repeat it again, you know. And some albums are like a half an hour, but it's uh, after three songs, you're already done. So it's yeah. like in this case, it's maybe better to do an EP, you know. So it's up to the to the musician to create a a music that they, they can keep you uh, to the music um, and to keep your attention. Of course, right. it's way hard, way more hard with uh, extreme metal. I think it's it just is blasting, blasting full on. Yeah, so you need to be creative to find some 
mid-tempo or slow motion or like you say acoustic uh, bridge to keep the to keep the listener on or to to put some well, super so whoa what's going on i will turn well, the volume on because this is so good yeah or some melodic hooks that you know get the ear and go oh i, I want to hear that again that's cool okay. and and you bring up the point about maiden now you know i love some long maiden albums like a matter of life and death i love um you know brave new world i love but i will tell you the new one i like it but i gotta be honest man yeah. i listened to it two times and i've never gone back to it and maiden's one of my favorite bands because i'm kind of worn out by the 11 minute mark of that song that's 13 minutes you, you know what i mean it, yeah. it does <laughs> yeah, sure. it does do that to you you know people talk about my favorite band get ready guys here it comes my favorite band is rush everybody knows it the, the comment section is going to go crazy here uh you know because i always <laughs> bring up rush but rush did 21 12 and everyone's like yeah but it's a 20 minute song but it's not really it's a bunch of different pieces that are one song but they're every song is distinctive within that movement of that of that 20 minute song same thing with like fountain of lamb Nath. you have very you have it's not the same song for 20 minutes long you know maybe mm. you could maybe you could kind of accuse in the later albums that they've kind of repeated themselves sometimes a little too much like great example of that is the red and the black from a uh, book of souls it's 14 minutes long man does it repeat itself a lot it's a great song but Make it seven minutes, not 14 minutes. So you guys do a great job with that. I think the longest song is Total Obliteration at six minutes, and it rolls past quick. Oh, oh you got it's way enough. <laughs> What's that? It's way enough at this at this speed, yeah. it's way enough. <laughs> you uh mentioned one other quick thing here, um, and we'll wrap on two things. Uh the first one is you mentioned rehearsals. How often do you guys rehearse if you're not living close by each other? One time in a month. One time a month. How long? How long do your rehearsals go? Four or five hours, or just one or two hours, or no, no four or five hours. Yeah. Okay. But you guys are all pros, so you get in, you get it done, you work things out, and you move. Mostly pro. I saw you nod there a little. Yeah. Bit, so. <laughs> it, it it depends what you imply in pro. You know, it, it's not our full time job. We do this on right. our free time. But yes, uh, when when we come to make music, it's to make music, and we have a mission to fulfill. We do not come to drink beer or have some good time with friends. Party, yeah. All the people, yeah. all the people who play with me in Necrush right now, this lineup, it's some people I approach to be part of the band to make music. It's not my friends in the beginning. Right. It's not like if some friends are making a band. Right. Uh, I we made music together, and later we became friends. And so there is always this kind of thing when we are together, uh, we do not waste time, yeah. and uh, we spend it to to make the music. So yeah, if you want to say this is pro, I, I can afford it to you. But for me, we are like uh, let's say something in between. We are serious in our business, but serious. we are not. Uh, we are not uh, making. Let's say we are not living for this music. Yeah. Uh, music the making the money for for living. Right, right. You're not. You're about this money your... too much. This isn't your sole uh, source of income. You're you're doing this no, for the love of the music and the creation, <laughs> the creative yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. What do you do? You mind if I ask what you do as a career, or is that not a no, question? I work for um hotel business. Okay, there you go. Well, so, just kind of reiterates the point that most extreme metal bands do this for the love of creating the music and bringing that music if they can to us the fan base but generally they're not swimming in cash we know that that is just the reality of it you know sure um sure. wanted to ask you though relative to that um what is the what is the extreme metal we'll just use that term as opposed to black or death that kind of encompasses it all what's the extreme metal scene like in france as a whole and maybe more specifically relative to Paris, where I would think it would probably be bigger than anywhere else because of the size of the city and the number of people there. It's um, it's very good. I think it's um, I wasn't there in the eighties to say how it was at this time, but I think it was pretty confidential. But uh, it moved very fast. We have a lot of bands, a lot of uh, festival in little indoor festival, 
uh, middle festival, a huge festival, many shows, um, magazines, webzine, people involved in the business to print t-shirts, uh, patch, work on guitar gear. And it's, it's been very good and mostly French people, they are very, um, how can I say this? Very concerned about their identity. And I do not know any band who want to create music to sound like this member or to sound like a mobbing angel. They mm -hmm. have this influence, but most of the time they want to put their uniqueness, they want to put their signature and their mark, and it's very good we have this. I think the most famous example is, of course, Gojira. I was just going to say, they're the, probably the most famous French band right yeah, now. And, they have their, their, and really, they have their own sound, you know? No one is yeah. doing music like 100%. this. 100%. And they started in a in a kind of remote place in the, the southwest of France, uh, uh, and it's impressive the the career they had. Oh so, yeah. So um, mostly the, the the extreme metal scene is going well. We have many good bands, maybe in, like trash metal, black death or doom. Um, they are very active. We have many shows in France. Not everyone is going to tour in Europe or in other countries. Um, only a few are going um, outside of the border. I cannot say why, but, but it's like this. Maybe some people do not have the time or the ambition to make it. Maybe some people do does not have the English level uh, to, yeah. to make business with some uh, foreigner par partners. But um, so far, it's, go it's going well. And I am proud that Necrovetch is part of this scene. And, uh, even right now, we have some bands who say uh, we started music because we were listening to you ten years ago. So That's it's cool. kind of uh, an honor for us. And uh, so far, it's going well. Uh, and in Paris, of course, we have more possibility already for rehearsal to find the musician, for, to find the gear, the equipment, um, to to play the first show. So uh, of course, it's way more active here. I will say, I don't know there is a show every weekend or something. I I do not follow everything, but we have of show and all the European tours for the big bands mostly stop in Paris so sure. we have a uh, lots of metal coming here yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah you brought up Gojira and you know what's crazy about Gojira is if you and, and it's funny because I, I maybe two months ago I had a bunch of guys on we were doing sort of a, a drinking hang late at night which we do occasionally we, we take those streams off but they're live when we do them and it's a bunch of us youtubers that do it that have channels and a couple of them, many of them hadn't heard the original demos by Gojira when they were mm. uh, Godzilla, I guess they were called, yep. weren't they? Godzilla. Yep. Man, those dem those demos are fucking amazing, man. They are so good. And they don't sound like that anymore, not really. But, sure. but you could see these were 15, 16-year-old kids that were like so far ahead of the curve. I mean, they were just incredible, right? Um, I imagine you probably are aware of those, right? Yeah, sure. Even the first album sounds way different compared to what they did. Uh, I think they started to change with uh, From Mars to Sirius or uh, L'Enfant Sauvage. Right. But uh, of course, it's. Uh, I, I guess even if people are not too much into this kind of music because it's like, let's say, more open, maybe more mainstream on some of the latest album, uh, everyone should be uh, admirative and respectful to the career that a band yeah. have coming from France, from a remote place and, and finish... Uh, touring with Metallica. It's yeah, fucking absolutely. huge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is huge. I mean, they they're probably the big the big metal band out of I would say probably the most successful metal band. I mean, Alcest has in done France, pretty yes. well. Yeah, in France, Alcest has done mm. pretty decently. Uh I would say probably you know, Death Spell is done is probably maybe one of the other although I don't know that I don't think they've ever played out do they even play do they even play live no, we do we do not know many things about this band i guess yeah, they, they are pretty much famous but for uh for the underground or for something uh, intimate yeah i'm not sure if you if you go in hellfest and you ask a um, random metalhead mostly you will know gojira i'm, I'm not sure about uh Blood of Snuff, uh right. despend Vega, gorod or um this uh, this other bands yeah actually gorod it's interesting you bring that up they just played in the States last month. I actually saw them with um, Wormrot and my buddy Max plays mm -hmm. in Exist, who he also plays in Death to All, the singer for, he 
the death of all the tribute. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, that sure. Matt. Um, and I, I'd never heard of Gorod. So there you go. I'd never heard of him until I walked in there that night. And got to be honest, it wasn't really my thing. I wasn't as into it as I kind of hoped I did. I got to be honest with you, I left after about four songs. But, you know, <laughs> that's just that's the thing. Like I said, mm -hmm. the gas mask and hand grenades thing is a little misleading sometimes because I love a lot of extreme metal, but I also love these other things, you know, like like dark ambient and, you know, singer songwriter stuff so it, it's kind of weird but look man um anything you want to say to anybody out there to sort of tie things up as far as you know necro wretch i'll say thanks for for the interview and the, the support to the band um thank you for all the people who support us especially in the, in the usa uh hopefully we will have a decent opportunity to finally come and play in, in your country and generally, I would, I would like to thank uh, everyone that is in the scene, maybe from um, playing music, printing T-shirts, uh, doing um, interviews like you do. Uh, people around, it's important that uh, we should remember that uh, it's not only about the musician, but about uh, the community itself. Metal is not something that is related on radio or on TV. We live in our own circle. And it's important to thanks that everyone that is involved uh, in this circle. Yeah. And of course, I see Roger is saying merciless, loud blast, aggressor, massacre, bitterness, death metal. He knows. He uh, knows all the deep course. metal bands. <laughs> of course, all these bands are, are around. Mostly, these are bands, uh, merciless, loud blast from the eighties, but they are still around. Uh, aggressor as well. Uh, massacre is no more, but uh, yeah, there, there's plenty of of good bands uh, to check. Um, if you're interested, I will, I will drop you an email after this interview to to put some of the young blood uh, generation uh, that are interesting in black and, and death metal. Yeah, do that. If Do you see there on the side, do you see where it says private chat? Can you see that? Where is the private chat? chat. It should be on your... Somewhere. On I don't know. Yeah, you... I am on my phone, so I'm not okay. sure I can well, here's see what I'll do. on the screen. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'll do. I'll get your email address from Will. Is that okay? No, yeah, it's just necrowretch at gmail.com. Okay, necrowretch at gmail. Easy. There you go. All these weirdo extreme metal dudes are now going to be sending you emails. So. <laughs> sure, send news. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, send, send dick pics. But no, don't, don't, do, that. don't do that. Um. So, yeah, Vlad, I want to thank you very much for doing this. Continued success. This really is a really good album. I do want to send you, and I will, the link to that show tonight. It is on tonight at 9 p.m. on Heavy Metallurgy is the uh, the channel. It's run by my good buddy Marty Marty Worm. It's not it's not his real name, but he had a magazine called Worm Gear, so he goes by Marty Worm and uh, Alan Ooh. over at Let's Talk Metal, and they do a, a weekly. I think they call it the Album Club or something. Or the album. Somebody will put it in the thing. I forget the name of it. the album club, I think. And your album was chosen by, uh, I believe, Melanie Loves Death Metal. She chose your album cool. to do tonight. So they're gonna they're gonna break it down, and um, let's hope it's positive. I think it will be. Uh, if it isn't, don't blame me. I'm just the messenger, not the I'm not the guy. <laughs> um, but no uh, let's stay in contact, and hopefully, uh, you know, big things for Necro Rich in the future. All right, hang on one sec, okay. All right, guys. Thanks for album album club review is what it's called. So I'll get you that. Uh, I'll get you that uh, link then. Um, okay. Sure, guys. We're gonna roll. Oh, I did have two quick announcements. Sorry. Um, Sunday this Sunday at two p.m. Eastern time, U.S. So eleven on the West Coast. Uh, I've got Chris and Mike from Skeletal Remains are coming on killer killer death metal man uh if you love i don't are you aware of those guys vlad skeletal remains yeah, sure. oh man of course. great fucking band great fucking band uh they're coming on mike and uh and and chris 2 p.m on sunday and then on thursday next thursday i have my buddy tom draper and his two partners in the hands of goro uh project are coming on they're going to talk about their forthcoming album which i believe comes out march 
second, I think. Uh, for first, March first. Um, Hanzo Goro are, is coming out, and then I got a lot of really badass, cool guys coming on. So stay tuned, guys. Not that Vlad wasn't, because he was for sure. But I got some huge names coming, guys. Like man, massively huge. So stick around for that, and also Sunday at. 10 p.m. Eastern, this coming Sunday, Eric Berg from Psychic Vacuum and I are going to wrap up the pretty much non-metal final uh, tracks of Jethro Tull off of all the bonus 40th anniversary reissues and the box sets. So Jethro Tull deep dive on uh, the 25th at 10 p.m. and the guys from Skeletal at 2 p.m. And lots more crazy shit coming. You know how I'm constantly churning and, and burning, guys. From gas masks and hand grenades, where the metal or the music melts your mind. There, I already screwed it up. I already screwed up my slogan once there. So hang on one sec, Vlad, okay? See you guys. Cheers. I